Welcome back to the Transform Your Mind to Transform Your Life Radio Hour and Podcast. I'm your host, Life Coach Marina Young, and sitting in the guest chair today is Daniel Mangina. And um, Daniel and I are going to be talking on the topic of Asperger's Syndrome. Um, uh, Daniel, as he will tell you and share his story, was diagnosed um, uh, with Asperger in his um, 20, I think. Um, I am very familiar with this um, uh, with this um, uh, diagnosis because I have a 21 year old son that's actually been diagnosed with Asperger's, but he was diagnosed as an early at an early age, maybe um, around 10 or so, um, and um, he was so. You know, that's, you know, the topic of our conversation is today is how can you work with social cues when you have Asperger's? And my son was so, you know, anti-social as you, if, if there's not a better word, he just couldn't, he was so nervous speaking to people that he developed a stutter and the stutter made him almost unintelligible. Um, as he's gotten older now, he's working and he's practiced talking to people. I can mean like, he would talk to everybody that he meets. <laughs> everybody would come up to me and say, your son is such a wonderful kid. That's because he practiced and uh, mm -hmm. now he doesn't have the stutter. And, uh, you know, I guess um, I, I'm pretty sure he still, you know, has the diagnosis, but he's handling it much, much better. And Daniel is going to talk to us about how he has, you know, managed with his diagnosis. He's a podcast host. He's a speaker. Um, and um, a motivational person. So, you know, stick around. Um, and if you know someone with Asperger's or you yourself, you know, has some, you know, difficulty with social interactions, maybe you'll be able to find some um, uh, great content in our topic today. So um, welcome, Daniel. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yes. All right. So let me give you um, some more information on um, Daniel. Um, like I mentioned earlier, after receiving a late diagnosis as Asperger and experiencing what can only be described as life-shattering trauma at the age of just 20, Daniel spent the next seven years struggling to keep his revelations and events from spilling into his everyday life. As a result of his struggles, Daniel built a simple four-step system called Beyond Intentional Paradigm, um, initially, initially, it was built as a lifeline while he was grappling with suicidal thoughts, um, but beyond intention has transformed Daniel's life um, from misery into celebration. Through his own struggles, Daniel found a path to last in joy and purpose, and he wants nothing more than to share the tools that saved his life. Daniel is the host as, of Do It With Dan podcast series regular blogs, published articles, and worldwide workshops that has helped thousands across the globe. His prolific work recently earned him a spot in the, World Street, the Wall Street Journal as a master of success. Um, and as seen on Wall Street Journal, Market Watch, ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox. All right, well, uh, Daniel, um, again, <laughs> I'm gonna enjoy um, our conversation. Hopefully I will learn some cues to help me work with my son. So um, <laughs> the first question I have here is um, what um, you were diagnosed in your twenties um, or yeah, 20 I was 27 years old. Asperger's, right? So did your family miss the social cues when you were um, a, a, a child or do you think you developed it later on in, as a teenager? So I was really, I've always been really blessed. For me, Asperger's has been a gift. It's been a gift because the way that my brain works has allowed me to, to achieve a lot. And the social challenges have effectively just been the cost of doing business for me in my life. So when you look at my brilliance that came out academically, um, great achievements, I people are kind of just put up with me living with my foot in my mouth and being horribly awkward and unable to really relate because there were other benefits, I think is what really happened. 
you know, after my diagnosis, when things became more clear, siblings would tell stories and they're like, yeah, but you know, we love you. So, cause I, I don't really have now older moving beyond the diagnosis. I've developed relationships and friendships, but other than that, I had my two friends, Nathan and Jamie I've had since I was 15. I don't have any friends from school. I don't have any friends from high school. I don't have any friends. I've got one friend from college because I, I didn't know how to form those bonds with people. Yeah. Even when people wanted to form bonds with me, I didn't know how to hold and maintain those. Once I understood what was going on, one of my gifts is understanding things that are systemized. That's you know why my work has been very effective, I feel, with people today. And I simply went out and understood, knowing what I was missing, went out and studied and much like your son, practiced and learned to understand what those shortfalls were. And although it's a very conscious process, was able to then effectively uh, operate socially. Yeah, um, the friends part, I can understand because, you know, my, my son never developed friendships, you know. Um, mm. I had uh, twin girls that their world was friends. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They didn't go to school to learn. They went to school because as soon as they went to school, <laughs> they have friends. He never mm -hmm. had friends. His friends were his teachers, mm -hmm. you know? Um, that's who he seemed to, um, to gravitate to. And of course they would say, oh, he's such a nice boy. He's such a nice kid. Um, mm -hmm. His friends were his teachers, you know? That's mm -hmm. who he, he thought was friends. And I, like I said, he's 21 years old and he's doesn't have, he's never had a friend. Um, so yeah, um, whether it's, I'm not sure you're saying that you weren't able to form the bonds of friendship. Um, uh, so tell us what, you know, you said you understand how your brain works now and you, and it's, mm -hmm. and you think it's a blessing at one point in time, um, uh, you know, people were telling me his, his counselors at school were telling me that people specifically or some companies specifically like um, people with Asperger's because they're able to sit and concentrate and, mm -hmm. and do things, you know, you know, he was um, won awards, my son won awards in, in when he was in school for art, he would sit there and make these art projects and uh, for hours and hours, but that has changed now. He's, he's not like that any longer. So, um, so tell someone that's listening, uh, why do, why, do, what is Asperger's and why is it that you're not able to form, you know, friendships, you know, we're talking with social cues. Tell mm -hmm. us what you have learned about how your brain works. So essentially the difference between what is commonly recognized as autism and Asperger's is that someone that's more formally viewed as autistic doesn't have the ability to communicate with the outside world. When we have Asperger's, we have the same thought processes, but we can actually communicate it. Whereas, especially if someone's nonverbal, they have no way to communicate those thought processes. There's a lot of amazingness going on, but it can't be communicated. And what I found in my own experience is that everything works in ones and zeros. It's very systematic. And when there's a disconnect in that systemization, it falls apart. Social cues is a very fluid, it's an art form. It's not there is a science to it, but there's an art form to it, which doesn't move in ones and zeros. And so because it doesn't move in that systematic fashion, people that have brains like me don't know what to do with it. And also because we're always things that you do unconsciously. So for example, in this conversation, I have to maintain concentration the entire time because I have to be aware of just because I've got something to say doesn't mean that I have to say it now. I have to pause understand the dance that's happening in a social setting and do that as a very conscious process, which can be very draining at times also. Right. Right, and because right. we do things generally, because it's the logical thing to do, if you almost think like Mr. Spock, right? For me, the, 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 <laughs> what's he, he's a, um, what do they call Vulcans? The Vulcans are like a nation of Asperger's people. <laughs> it's like, right. does it make sense? Is there logic? And, right. Logic is fine, but when we're talking about the dance that happens between humans in a social interaction, right. it's not just logic. There's an right. emotional aspect too. And right. those pieces of wiring aren't necessarily always there with someone right. that's called Asperger's. They can be learned and practiced and understood, but it's a conscious process, not something that naturally gets built over time. 
Right. Yes. Right. Yeah. Because we're having, when you're having a relationship, you know, mm -hmm. um, with someone, yeah, you, um, I can understand what you're saying. It's, it's not logical. It's not ones or twos. You know, my, um, um, uh, my son um, obviously had therapy and one is his doctors said that he's like Sheldon. Have you watched Big Bang Theory? Yeah, Sheldon's got Asperger's. <laughs> he's, he's, he's my people. I yeah, see you, Sheldon. Exactly. I see you. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> um, same type of thing, you know what I mean? Where, um, yeah, I love Sheldon. You know, Sheldon is very funny and he does a very great job with that character. I have, I, I didn't see the connection, but you know, my, I think what my doctor was trying to, what his doctor was trying to say is that um, just that there's a disconnect, you know, Sheldon has to work mm -hmm. very hard on understanding social cues, what he should say and what he shouldn't say, you know, mm -hmm. and he's usually very rude because he doesn't think about the other person's, you know, mm -hmm. um, feelings. He just has mm -hmm. something to say and he says it, but mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's the only connection. It's because, because it, Feelings aren't logical things. They don't go in neat boxes. Right. <laughs> right. You can't do a mathematical equation about an emotional response. It's a, it's a very primal thing. And so when you're in a space where that is required, it can be challenging. And, and that's what the social world is. It's a, a combination of responses and reactions that just don't have, don't have logic to them. Okay. Now, before we get off of this part of our conversation, I still want to ask a question. So my, my son hasn't formed any friends. He's 21. You haven't mm -hmm. formed any friends that are in the ones that the two that you have. Someone is mm, I form friends now. Now I formed friends. Yeah, friends now. Okay. I've so got friends us, now. I've got a lot of good friends now. Okay. So tell us, how did you maneuver that? By, by not making it about what's going on in my head and keeping it about what's happening in my heart. In your heart? Mm -hmm. Okay. So intellect the mental intelligence the mind-based intelligence is trying to use the brain function the wiring in my brain is going through these mathematical sequences and not getting something when i come out of here and i enter into my heart and i'm connecting with people at a purely heart level then it doesn't matter what's going on here there can be a resonance so i don't have any fake friends because if we can't hold a genuine heart-based connection then we're not going to be in each other's lives and when we're holding loving space for each other in a, in a, in a heart-based connection, maybe I will put my, my foot in my mouth, but you're going to love me anyway. Okay. Maybe there's going to be something that doesn't make any sense, but I'm going to love you anyway, because it's not about what's happening here in the head. It's about connecting a soul, a heart level okay. with another human being. And that's where I found to be my happy place with relationship and with social cues, because if I have to be in my head, I just walk away from it. Right. I don't okay. entertain it. Well, that's, well, that's great. I'm glad I asked the question then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, get in your heart space. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, um, form relationships. Well, okay. So that's good. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, how do you, I know that you're a podcast host and mm -hmm. you interview people. Mm -hmm. So um, when you're interviewing, like when you're doing this interview or when you're the host and you're, you're mm -hmm. talking so do you do the same thing? Do you have to get out of your head and, 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 and operate from your heart space? Or is there other ways that you, you're handling that situation? So first and foremost, um, I use my tools of mindfulness and consciousness in order to engage in this space. So I set very clear intentions about this. This time is set aside. I've given my mind enough to let go by giving it a box to play in. I have genuine conversations. I don't have to think about what I'm going to say because I'm speaking from here. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about how to engage with you. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm holding that container, but in terms of the communicating that I'm doing, that's coming from here. Okay. The framework within which I'm doing the communication is happening here. So okay. there's a conscious process in terms of setting that space to, this is a back and forth. I'm sticking clear with my intention to share this space with you, to add value to your community, to create something beautiful together. But then I'm not thinking about what to say. I'm allowing the truth to come from here, heart-based communication. Okay, okay, I love it, I love it, mm. I love it. Yes, 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 okay. Mm. All right, so um, you mentioned, um, I don't think I read it in your bio, but I saw it as some of the work that you do. And you talked about micro-shifting. Um, <laughs> how, how does, can you talk to us about um, micro-shifting and 
is that something specifically that you do for because of the Asperger diagnosis or can anybody use this micro shifting? What is it? Micro shifting is actually shown it proven itself to be the most one of the most popular aspects of my work with people because it just makes good sense and just gets good results because anybody can have a quantum leap. Anyone can have a massive shift. Everyone, anyone can have that, but everybody can make baby steps. Everybody can. And baby steps moves past resistance. It moves past um, fear because I'm just taking one step. I'm not taking on the whole thing. Procrastination drops down and you can start to build a momentum towards success in an endeavor. So micro shifting, which is a consistent series of baby steps in the direction of a consciously chosen outcome. That's how I define it. It creates a momentum, a rhythm that gets us to where we're going without the anxiety around the big goal, without the I can't do it, without the resistance, just one step at a time. Okay, so it's um, it's shifting your mind to, let's say if you've got a, a, a big goal, mm -hmm. you know, you know, you want to write a book. So mm -hmm. what you're saying is that you take you take one step and then you complete that step and then you take another step mm -hmm. and, 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 and you, sh you, so I guess the shifting, I, I understand the micro baby steps and the shifting is what you're saying is once you've completed this one step, then you go on to the next one. So you don't look at the big picture like macro, you just do mm -hmm. micro. All right. Yes. So that's good. So there's, there's, there's a couple of overlays there, not to cut, but there's a couple of overlays first and foremost, Micro shifting in its pure essence is very much a surrender based process because you're opening up to God, to the universe to present what that next step is. And oh. then once that step is presented, then you ask yourself, what is the smallest minimum deliverable? Something I know I can do to move towards this step that God or the universe has presented to me. I take that step, I celebrate, and then I'm open to what the next step is holding the intention of what the final goal is. So I don't need to keep looking at the big goal. I know if I go one step at a time, God's got my back on this one step at a time. And then trusting that that next step is going to be revealed. And then regardless of what shows up, even if it looks like it's going wrong, trusting that everything's going right because my world is taking care of me. God's got my back. The universe only gives me what I can handle. And because I've been very conscious in choosing what I'm moving towards, if that makes sense. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. I missed that totally when you, you said that. So I'm glad we, you, you added some clarity there. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I um, I know that concept. I mean, I've never heard it called that. But um, yeah, if you're if you're open to the universe and you, you know, I work with, you know, the thoughts of like the vortex and the law of attraction and things mm -hmm. like that. So if you feel that, um, yeah, you open to guidance and direction and you get this um, inspiration to do mm -hmm. one small thing or one small step. Um, mm -hmm. And then you do that step um, and then you wait for instructions on the next one. I love it, mm -hmm. I love it, mm -hmm. that's great. So do you coach that or how do you? It's one of the things that it's one of the cornerstones to why I teach. Um, I don't do so much coaching. I've got a group program. Um, okay. My signature program is called Micro to Millions, principally around financial abundance, but people come for other things too. Um, because another cornerstone is that once you affect change somewhere, it can be everywhere. So right. if I work on my challenges around abundance, I can use that as the doorway to work on my relationships, to work on my health. And we find that all the time. People come because they want to make money. They find the love of their life. Their health improves. They find their purpose and so on and so forth. So yeah, micro shifting is a cornerstone to that. Um, that's why it's called micro to millions, because we micro shift all the way up to whatever abundance we want to get to. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm like... Mm very shocked in this <laughs> that we are we're you know we're getting into um uh you know the universe and abundance and things like that i didn't expect that so so, that, <laughs> that, <laughs> so that's awesome all right so um in your bio you talked about the fact that you created this program that's called mm -hmm. beyond intention and um mm -hmm. the pardon so mm -hmm. um uh, tell us what that's all about well, it comes from me seeking to make sense of things that don't really make sense because without them making sense, I literally shut down. You know, um, 
people in my life laugh at me about this all the time. If you send me to a third world country and ask me to solve the debt crisis, I have no stress about it. I can sit down, I can look at it dis dispassionately, I'm fine. If I'm late to get somewhere or somebody changes a plan at the last minute, that's when you'll see me freak out. <laughs> you will see me, you will see me freak out. It's like, wait, 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 the blood, the blood, where are the steps in the thing? That's when, that's when I freak out. Yeah, um, right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, small things like missing a plane, like yeah. me and my wife went to, we went away a couple of weeks ago, we were a bit late. The plane closed early, something like that. I don't remember because I was in the middle of a meltdown. <laughs> So I had to like breathe and come to center. I was like, yes. okay, we just get the next plane, you know? Okay, we're not gonna- yeah, but your brain doesn't work the, like we'll, that, as you said, right? My brain you know? doesn't work like that. It's very right. simple. We missed that plane. We had to pay some money, but we get on the next plane. We lost our first class seats, no problem. We're gonna still get to where we're going. But for me, there was the vision of what was gonna happen and it wasn't happening. And so there's a meltdown. So I have to navigate that. That's one of my things. But finding the space to navigate life and the choices that evolve into the experiences that we have is what beyond intention does it breaks us free of the stuck states holding us where we are and from where we want to get to um, whether that's in our emotional state in our vibration or our frequency in our thoughts in our beliefs or in our actions those things that are going to take us to where we want to be are just a choice away beyond intention empowers us to make those choices okay Yes, I like that. Um, my son, um, of course, um, with the Asperger situation, he is not able to understand time a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, if he's got to go to work for four o'clock, he's actually leaving the house at 10 in the morning. <laughs> so I don't think he's ever been late for anything because <laughs> he's, he's, he's there hours on time. So, mm -hmm. okay. So um, uh, your 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 um, your beyond intention paradigm is yeah. is what you're saying that um, you have to set the intention of mm -hmm. where you want to go. Um, mm -hmm. And the, my book, Stepping Beyond Intention, teaches you how to set that intention. Right. Okay. So you, mm -hmm. this is a book. I've got a book called Stepping Beyond Intention. Um, my best, my first bestseller, Stepping Beyond Intention, actually takes you through what beyond intention is, how to set intentions, how to create alignment with those intentions, how to find flow in stepping into them and how to hold a joyful life that contains those intentions. Okay, all right. So um, the beyond intention, so I understand the intentions. You you have an intention to you know go where you were going. You have an intention mm -hmm. to um, uh, you know micro to millions. Your intention is mm -hmm. to be a millionaire or to get millions. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. why the beyond intention? I didn't get that. <laughs> so beyond, because so when I talk about intentions, for me, I'm, I'm considering intention to be a thought, a conscious thought or choice huh? of thought that disrupts what my unconscious pattern of thought is. Mm. So according to Bruce Lipton, we're running on our unconscious mind 90 to 97% of the time. That's a lot of time that we're running on unconscious programs. 70% right. of those programs we get when we're a child and are imprinted and then they're reinforced and then they become who we are. Right. So when I want to disrupt a pattern that's creating an outcome or a habit that's creating an outcome, I set an intention to intervene and disrupt that. Okay. If everything's going the way I want it to, I don't need to disrupt anything. If my unconscious mind is giving me an abundant, joyful, purpose-driven life, I don't need to set intentions about that right. because that's where I'm going. Then I'm just fine tuning it. Mm -hmm. And that's generally not going to be disrupting the unconscious pattern. It's just setting the container a bit more. So my work with people evolves through three phases. Number one, setting intentions. Once we've effectively begun setting intentions so that our unconscious patterns are shifting, then we look at step two, the container, my vibration. What's my vibe? I'm choosing that. That's what my intention is. Intention isn't no longer in my thought so much, but in my vibe because my vibration sets the container or the, the landscape for what I can achieve, what I can experience. And then from there, we look at what are my agreements, my deep seated agreements about the, the framework of reality as a whole. What are those? So when I'm saying get beyond intention, what I'm saying is getting beyond the need to change the program because the program is working for me. 
my unconscious programs are serving me. I'm no longer intervening with those. I'm simply enhancing the experience I want. And this book is the roadmap to getting to that place where your unconscious patterns are actually serving you and not something that you must change. Okay. All right. Yes. All right. So um, I work with that and I understand that too. In fact, um, I've written several articles myself on um, reprogramming your subconscious mind because you're mm-hmm. right. Um, our subconscious programs are actually downloaded to us, you know, by the time we were seven years old. And I, mm-hmm. the statistic that you mentioned is, is, is accurate where our subconscious mind is running us, you know, we, between 97, 95, 97% of the time. So I like what you're saying that, um, that if you want to disrupt it, then you've got to set the intention to disrupt it or to reprogram it. <clears throat> and, um, uh, and, 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 and you also talked about, um, about, about, you know, about the fact that if it's working, then you don't have to disrupt it. But mm-hmm. um, uh, most people that do this work, you know, say that the subconscious programming is usually not working because it's usually negative, right? Yeah, Did there's a there's a negative too? there's a negative bias. Uh, I think right. they've done measurements, and there's a there's a, ne- a negative cognitive bias. It's like eighty, the Pareto principle kicks in, and eighty percent of people are veering towards a negative bias, and eighty percent of the time, we're veering towards a negative bias. But I think that's actually about the collective agreements of energy that we're in the pl- as a planet. I mean, if you look at the way that twenty twenty is going. Most people are under this thing of fear. So that's going to imprint a negative bias. Um, But I think it's a choice as to whether we subscribe to that negative bias. We can be part of the 20%. And part of my work, my overall mission is to flip the script so that 80% of positive bias is what we're experiencing as a reality and as 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 a people. Yeah, but that's hard to do because I think what um, uh, what the the science shows <clears throat> is that when things happen to us as a child, or just like you're talking about twenty, you know, twenty twenty, um, mm-hmm. I'm not sure much of the imprinting in twenty twenty because this is a pandemic. Um, people may learn from it, or people may be, mm-hmm. you know, conscious of the fact that you know they can something can happen and they can lose everything. But that's always been there. You know, it's in the Bible, mm-hmm. like fish caught. And one of my favorite scriptures in the, in the Bible that I quote very often, because it says like, sh- like, like fish caught in a net, you never know when mm-hmm. trouble is going to come. And that's basically what life is. But I think what happens with the um, um, subconscious um, uh, programming is that we only record the bad things that happens to us. We don't normally record the good things. You know what I mean? So then the bad things become our imprint. So for instance, if we had a bad relationship, you know, mm-hmm. they're saying that it's, it's imprinted until you, by your seven. So, you know, if um, your parents were bad to you or you didn't get love or something, you're going to imprint that. But we also imprint in relationships. Um, uh, if, if someone does something to you bad in a relationship, that's what's going to imprint on you. But if someone does something nice to you maybe it wouldn't imprint i don't know can you speak on that <laughs> i think it's going to depend on the frame that you're seeing you know if someone's sitting in the 80 percent of negative bias then they're going to be attracted to that i mean law of attraction we get more of what we are right 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 we don't mm-hmm. get what we want we get what we're a match to so it, it ultimately i believe comes down to what you what you believe you know mm-hmm. i personally don't subscribe to that i but i've trained myself to, to be the reverse of that situation. You. If you haven't trained yourself to be the reverse, then you're not going to have that. Okay. Most people are just running unconsciously, not even knowing that they even have the possibility to observe their bias, to do right. something about their bias. But we do have that power. And again, part and parcel of my work is empowering people to see that they do have that ability. But you're right. A lot of people are just running around blaming and shaming and guilting and instead of consciously making the choice to step up and decide what inputs they're going to accept and which ones they're going to reject yeah 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 um living consciously is is definitely the goal Mm -hmm. and um you know just like most of us are being run just like the subconscious um uh, mind um runs us 97 95 percent of the time 
-hmm. we can use that same statistic and say that, you know, 95 to 97% of people are being led unconsciously. They're not living conscious lives, which is why mm. the, the, the word consciousness has become so big and everybody's doing meditation and everybody is, is talking about the vortex and law of attraction because mm -hmm. living consciously is, is very important. You know, um, as a coach, I, I live consciously, you know, um, mm -hmm. but, but I just started doing that, um, uh, you know, um, in my 40s, you know, mm. so my whole entire life, I was just being led, <laughs> led by circumstances, led by events, led by like anything. Um, uh, that's what leads you. You react on things, you know? So now I know not to react to things, to understand them, to use maybe negative experiences to, um, uh, for the positive, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? To prepare Learn you from it. it. Right, mm. right. So things like that. So, so that's awesome. All right. So, um, you know, let's finish up with the, with the Asperger's um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, comment. Say. Right. So can, uh, how can someone with Asperger's live consciously? I would, I would have thought that that's a little difficult. <laughs> I would actually say someone living with Asperger's is, is more properly set up to live consciously because so much of our life is happening at a conscious level. It's not happening at an unconscious level because really? we're stepping through it as a, as a process of thought. So we have the opportunity to interject along the way and in, in to do something different. So when I look at my social interactions, for example, it's actually process wise, more feasible that I can be more aware and be more present when I'm having a conversation with you because I'm doing it step by step anyway. It's not just a, 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 an autoplay that's happening. I'm moving through it. So I have more opportunity to step in and say, Am I having this conversation with you, with you with love and compassion? Am I intentional in what I want to gather from this converse, conversation and what I want to add to this conversation? Where am I? Where's my, where's my attention? Where's my awareness? So there's actually more opportunity. Now, opportunity doesn't mean there's going to be a probability of the outcome, but it does mean that there's an opportunity. And, um, Again, that's one of the things I'm grateful for with my Asperger's. I have more opportunity to be presently aware because I've got that step-by-step -step process happening in the background. Hmm. Okay, so that's great. All right, so um, if I were to break that down, I think what you're saying is the Asperger's mind, because it's logical and it's doing the, the zero one thing that mm -hmm. you're more conscious of what's going on because you are you are doing it logically mm -hmm. is that what you're saying you're doing it well there's the, the opportunities there to be conscious but we okay. can be consciously unconscious don't forget we can be unconscious to our consciousness just because okay. it's there explain doesn't mean one. i'm giving it my attention <laughs> go ahead so explain that one unconscious <laughs> to <our> consciousness <laughs> <laughs> so so the opportunity is there for me to be aware because it's a step-by-step -step process mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that i'm giving it my attention Mm. I still have to give my attention to that step-by-step -step process. Ah, I get you. Do you see where I'm coming from? And it's right. by giving it my attention. Now there's a level of consciousness to it. And now I can start in to introduce an intentionality in how I'm stepping through those, uh, that, that, that communication. Okay. Got you. Got you. Got you. Mm. All right. So um, tell us about your podcast. Um, uh, what's it called again? Do it with Dan. Do it with Dan. Tell us about your mm -hmm. podcast. Do it with Dan, and um, and then you can tell our audience where they can get a hold of you. Uh, you know about your your teachings and um, uh, what you offer and things like that. Well, always the place to go is dreamwithdan.com, my website. So dreamwithdan.com, that's where everything is. My books are there, podcasts, any free trainings and masterclasses is normally something. Um, my next sort of major free offering is on the 15th of November, I'm doing a completely free workshop to empower business owners to create more abundance, not speaking for 15 minutes and selling for the rest of the time. I'm actually <laughs> recording a workshop that I'm going to be selling later. So I'm delivering a workshop that's going to sell for hundred dollars. We're, we're delivering it for free on the 15th of November. I'm excited about that, but yeah, all details for that sort of thing are always going to be on the website. Um, my podcast is me just having conversations with people. Um, I want to inspire change, um, remove the excuses that we have around change that we say we can't have, and to give people tools that they can employ to create more change. Um, again, leading towards this mission of more people living abundant, joyful, purpose-driven lives. Because if they're doing that, 
then we can reach that tipping point where we move from the 80% of negative to 80% of positive. And that's what I'm really passionate about. That's awesome. That's awesome. Mm. All right. So I'll do it with Dan. Um, mm. uh, right. Okay. All right. Well, this has been an illuminating conversation. I learned a it's bit more about the Asperger's mind. Mm -hmm. I learned um, uh, a bit more about, you know, interrupting your subconscious patterns um, by going beyond your intention. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, and I'm pretty sure that um, our listeners, you know, learned uh, a few things about, um, about, you know, working with an Asperger person. And I love what you said about operating from the heart instead mm -hmm. of being logical, then you take the conversation down to your heart. You know, like, again, I, I'm intimately aware of the Asperger um, person because I have a son mm -hmm. um, that's been dealing with it um, uh, you know, most of his life. Um, so I will, I will, I will see how I can coach him into operating mm -hmm. from his, um, from his heart level. <laughs> a great resource is a, um, an organization called heart math, H E A R T M A T H dot org. They've okay. got some great resources and, um, information about heart coherence, which is creating that resonance with the heart so that you can be more heart centered. They've got some really great tools. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I will definitely um, guide him towards that because yes, mm -hmm. I think that um, relationships and friendships um, is how we can be happy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, like well, I said, he's never cultivated. He's never cultivated any of them. But, but the really cool, the say? really, the really interesting thing about having Asperger's though is you don't see what you're missing out on. <laughs> you don't see what. You don't see what you're missing out on. Oh, really? So, yeah, I'm perfectly fine by myself, but there's something beautiful about adding other people into my experience. Yeah. So my happiness isn't reduced by me being with without other people, but it's right. enhanced by me being with other people. Yeah, uh, he hasn't learned that lesson. He's mm. like I said, he leaves at ten o'clock to go to work at four, mm -hmm. <laughs> and he's just focused on on work or maybe focused on. You know, he's thinking of, you know, going to going to trade school and that's what he's focused on, mm -hmm. but he's not focused on relationships and he's never had one. And I know mm. that if he does, then um, he'll he'll be he'll be happier mm -hmm. and, um, and you know what I mean? And, and mm -hmm. live a, a richer life. So, mm -hmm. yeah, thank you for, you know, sharing with me um, as, as an Asperger parent and maybe um, the listeners that might have, you know, Asperger's because uh, I think it's a it's 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 a big diagnosis now, right? Mm. Um, they were saying that one in four boys have autism, and mm. uh, you know the Asperger's is part of the autism spectrum. You mentioned that mm -hmm. early on in our conversation. So I think there's probably a big amount of um, a large amount of the population that's working with some form of you know social anxiety. Now the other thing I didn't mention. Um, and, and, and I was reading um, something on Cora the other day about Asperger's, which is basically one of the reasons I wanted us to speak on that. Um, and one of the things the guy was saying is that, you know, he couldn't um, follow instructions. And I will mm -hmm. tell you, that was my biggest pet peeve with my son. I would tell him to do one thing and he does something totally different. And apparently that's part of the Asperger um, brain too. You can't follow complex instructions right it depends that... on the person i follow complex instructions very well in fact i'll follow them to the <laughs> letter so it depends on the combination of other things and there's other factors as well so for example uh i do a lot of work with archetypes in my work with clients and um we look at things like their four tendency grouping so it could be that he's a rebel type and so if you give him an instruction he's automatically not going to want to do it and that happens at an unconscious level so there, there are other factors at play i have found in my life and the people that i work with right okay all right so that's great to know i'm glad i, I mentioned mm -hmm. that so i mm -hmm. was thinking because this person talked about it and my son has it that that was a mm -hmm. regular symptom not being able to no. follow complex instructions all right so what you're saying is again um it's not with everybody but it's with with, with, with some people all right mm -hmm. but um so, all right. So, yes, um, uh, great conversation. I am. Um, I love conversations that move the needle along, that help people um, with with their current lives or their current struggles or or um, their current challenges. 
And mm -hmm. um, I'm glad that we were able to, to touch on Asperger's, we were able to touch on um, uh, goals, setting goals mm -hmm. <laughs> and working through them. Um, anybody mm -hmm. can do that. Every, anybody um, that, um, uh, you know, that's in life, that has a vision, that's one mm -hmm. way to work on um, uh, your goals by, by looking at them at the macro level and mm -hmm. asking the universe to, to guide you with your next step. Um, mm -hmm. So that's great. You know, I know that, that I, I do that. You know, I wake up in the morning and I, and I, I meditate and I'm looking for that instruction that, mm -hmm. you know, what, what can I do next or um, uh, in order to move my goals along, because of course mm -hmm. I have goals too. So <laughs> yeah, so that's awesome. All right, so listen, I wanna thank um, Daniel for, um, uh, you know, coming on um, my podcast. Um, I am going to be uh, visiting his podcast as well. <laughs> and um, mm -hmm. so coming on my, my radio and podcast, I should say. And um, in you know, inspiring us that um, uh, you know we can be successful mm. even with a diagnosis as as Asperger's. It doesn't have to, you know, um, uh, give you a life that's that hasn't had any quality. And I know again in your bio you mentioned that that when you first got the diagnosis, it was a hard it was hard for you and you had some struggles. Um, uh, you know, even thinking of you know ending your life kind of, or suicidal thoughts but you've worked with it and mm -hmm. now you're on the other end and you're teaching. And that's yeah. basically, you know, how we should go through life. You know, things might knock you to the ground, but you learn, um, you learn from it and how to work through it. And then you get on the other side and then you can teach. So many people that have written books is because they have mastered something that people are having problems with. And mm -hmm. when they've mastered it, then they teach it. So yeah, it's, um, you know, it's, it's, your story is great. Your um, inspiration is great. So I want to thank you for um, being on the show. <laughs> All right. Um, definitely want to thank um, you, the listeners and those watching on YouTube for tuning in to the Transform Your Mind to Transform Your Life um, radio hour and podcast. Um, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel um, so that you can watch our interview instead of just listening to it. But if you prefer to listen to it and you're listening on iTunes, um, I would love um, for you to subscribe. Um, uh, the more subscriptions we get, of course, we're able to take the message to a wider audience. And um, I also want to invite you guys to join my life coaching group on Facebook. Um, the group is growing by Leaps and Browns. I'll send you an invitation, Daniel. Um, I'm looking forward to, be on the group to it. As well. um, and basically what we do there is it's a group of coaches, um, so they share inspiring content, you know, on a daily basis, and um, so that we can ex inspire you um, uh, right through the week. So, um, as we wrap up, um, I'll give you a chance, Daniel. Any last words? You know, how can uh, what what can you say based on your beyond intention paradigm that would allow our listeners to transform their lives? Take it one day at a time and do it from the heart. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's simple. I like that. Mm -hmm. One day at a time and do it from the heart. I love it. You know, we don't need to say anything more after that. So, all right. Well, listen, thank you guys for tuning in. And until next time, namaste.